Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 92, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's just get right to it. The first one's called, I appreciate all you do. Hi, Mark. I feel all alone, but I trust and believe things will change. And that's from Jeannie Hahn. And she sent me a nice picture of the Antarctic coastline. Short and sweet. Thank you for that. And moving on. This one's called Question About the... Sorry, my email's running a little slow this morning. And this one just was taking this time to load okay question about the sun and clouds hi mark my name is also mark i'm pretty new to flat earth in that stage where i'm mostly in and then something will make me take a step back then a few more steps forward and yet again one back uh, like the cha-cha movie reference for you guys i've been listening to all your interviews which is so interesting and then today started watching your clue videos on number 12 now so thank you for your, all your hard work well, today was one of those take a step backward days, and I'm hoping you can shed some light on it, so to speak. I'm in the Dallas area in Texas. I was working outside around 6 p.m., so the sun was pretty far away and on its way down, as globalists would say. Now, with the flat earth model, the sun doesn't go down but goes around the flat earth. It makes sense. However, what I noticed was that the clouds between me and the sun had sunlight on them. On the bottom of the clouds, which was less obvious with the closer the clouds were to me further from the sun. Here's my issue. If the sun was traveling around the flat earth, I would s it would stay the same height. Ah, unless it's not staying the same height. So even far away, it wouldn't shine on the bottom of the clouds. These clouds were not super high or anything. It is, possible this is it possible the sun was shining through them? But like you say about trusting our eyes, I don't think so. The top of the clouds were darker than the bottom. I hope this makes some sense. What's your take on your experience with this? T Thanks for taking the time to read and respond. Sincerely. Mark Scotch, S-C-H-O-C-H, -C -H, and I will not give out his phone number. Uh, well, Mark, that's a good question. As a matter of fact, I know from an inside source that the director of the documentary Behind the Curve is actually hung up on the globalist side. He's hanging on to that because of the bottom side of the clouds. And it's really tough to explain because... Unless you're into software, and or God's a programmer, don't, don't think that we invented software and code, uh, then the lighting effects are exactly what God wants them to be. And I don't necessarily want to turn this into a sermon on a Sunday morning, but lighting effects, anybody that knows anything about simulations and the lighting effects settings that we can do now, we can do just about anything you want. And if that means lighting up the bottom of the clouds, we can do that. Uh, the speed of light is not what you think of it, it is, and if this place is some sort of built structure, then the deception there has has got some subtle nuances to it, and that's what I go with. Yeah, do I think there's sun hitting the bottom of the clouds? Yep, I do. Uh, is it bouncing off of something? Possibly. Is it just lighting up the bottom of the clouds? Because that's what it was intended to do. I don't know. But it's a good hang-up, and I like it. Uh, I treat it not much differently than I treat uh, Isaiah, what was it, 4112? 4112? Uh, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, which is, people say, okay, what's the point? I'm going, well, that's the only verse in the Bible that talks about the world being uh, a globe, kind of. But circle is not globe, it's not sphere, it's not ball. And yet everybody clings on to that one with their fingernails, like their lives depended on it. And they say, oh, yeah, that verse has, uh, and by the way, if I made the verse wrong, I know it's in Isaiah somewhere, I, but, but I'm fuzzy this morning. I just got off the treadmill. Uh, then why does that have veto power over the rest of the Bible? Uh, the bottom side of the clouds is not going to make or break the argument. But thank you for asking, because it's been on my mind recently, and I'm sure there's other people that are hung up on it besides you. Moving on. This one's called 12 Slides. Uh, oh, and it's not a short thing. Um, hello, Mark. Love your work. Can you please send me your survival guide, the famous 12 slides to convert someone to flat earth and the coast to coast interviews? I greatly appreciate it. I've been researching flat earth for over a year now, and I'm fully convinced. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Uh, there is no curvature. I have seen San Clemente Island 50 miles offshore. 
many times from my lifeguard tower in Southern California that is only about 10 feet above sea level. The island can still be seen when sitting on the wet sand with your binoculars three feet above sea level. The old white casino building on Catalina Island can be seen clearly and it sits about 20 feet above sea level 20 miles uh, 25 miles offshore i have an idea for an experiment that can be performed with a few chartered flights and minimal equipment set up a briefcase that can be placed on the floor of the aircraft with two spirit levels at 90 degrees to each other a compass a gps is optional a clock with a second hand and cameras recording everything from two angles and a camera recording the airplane's instrument particularly the airspeed indicator and artificial horizon the idea is to fly as level as possible in a straight east to west line or west to east either way travel at a known set speed and set altitude record the rate the compass changes over time record your location repeat this process progressively closer to the north pole you could make two or three flights in the continental u.s and then alaska i believe if you do this enough times and do a final flight starting in northern alaska and flying north towards the north pole until you are turned around by military or you believe you have reached the North Pole. If you reach the true magnetic North Pole, you should be able to fly in a circle and watch the compass stay fixed on the pole. If you are turned around by the military, fly east or west or west to east and record data. Repeat the experiment from Iceland, Sweden, Russia, or any country. Wow, this is, sorry, this is a very elaborate test. Uh, uh, you can get to or that has fellow flat earth truth seekers willing to recreate the experiment that will give us a different angle of attack of the North Pole. The idea is if you calculate the rate of change in the compass per mile when flying east to west and it progressively changes, changes more and more per mile as you collect data further and further north you can calculate how far away from the actual north pole we are being turned around at this is the end of the email this will not prove or disprove curvature but it will tell us if the actual north pole is being hidden and how much land is being hidden thank you in advance justin okay well i i, I may have to read that one again not right the second but it and thank you for the test love that people send me tests and they do on a routine basis, as you know. This one's called... Uh, let me see. This one's called Janet and Richard. And it looks like it was sent to me and several other people. It looks like a family discussion. So, okay. Uh, let's see. I don't know who the first part's. You scoffed at your dad coming out and being a flat earther. And that is okay, as I do not at all mind the double of your dad and I have remained silent. Mark Sargent and I have had discussions via phone and I will let him speak for me. Uh, Richard, I know you are busy starting your new business and have remained silent because you do not need to be telling potential clients you are a flat earther. As a believing individual who believes the scriptures is the entrant, the word of God and hang my life upon it. Mark Sargent is a good man. And I'm finding most flat earthers are holy Bible believers. Eh, about half. I enjoy going to websites to try to debunk the flat earth and they are foolishness. Flat earth is not some fringe group of people, but a movement that is sweeping the earth, debunking the deception that has existed since Copernicus, since the 1500s. You see, the flat earth debunks evolution and the Big Bang Theory and the lies taught to our children in our public schools, that there is no God and that all we see happened by random chance. The following is a video that Mark Sargent made at an international conference. If nothing else, you should be aware of the movement that is sweeping the planet. <laughs> yeah, and you said planet, but that's okay. That's fine. I'm, I'm not going to call you on a rookie mistake. That's just conditioning. And links to my video. Your dad blesses you and all you do. Don't worry. I will not bring it up to you again. Love, dad. Oh, so it was sent by his this a father to his sons. Wow, thank you. I, and I'm not. I think it was from Richard. So thank you, Richard, for sending this. Every once in a while, I will also get copy on correspondence between people. Uh, this one's called Earth is also flat in Denmark. And man, things are moving slow this morning. I'm just seeing a wheel. Come on. <laughs> then, yeah, I love it. Like a wheel spins and then I get two sentences. It's like, really? It took that long? Come on, Xfinity. Get your act together. Mark, can I please also have the 12 pictures mentioned? Best regards, K. A Peterson. You bet. And I sent him the 12 slides or her. This one's called, this one might interest you, Mark. 
Hi, Mark. I have just enrolled into a course and my intention is to write a dissertation on Flat Earth and try to get a pro FE document through the education system and back on the other side. It has to overlap with law. The law I can do, but the FE bit, I wondered if you could be interested in helping. Technically, I could credit you with your input for obvious reasons, but I would like to offer you a chance to populate some of the best and simplest arguments with the intention of seeing if we, the public, could ever sue them, the state, for teaching Teaching us that the solar system is the world in which we live in. I think one of the best arguments is about the sun's distance being the claimed 93 million miles. I have tried to find where this number actually comes from, and although the whole body of science claims it's from radar ping data using Venus, I am yet to find anything empirical to actually support this. It seems to be just a just so story. Just so story. I know this is a Baby sat on the mat stuff. Wow, you are using terms baby sat on the mat. I know I never had kids, so I don't know that saying. It's more of a case of if you would like to discuss the content I will put into the dissertation to get it through the system and out the other side. You have a mild and meek demean. <laughs> Amazing. Like all these these terms, I have never used any of these terms. Uh, so phrasing pro... FE points is why I think you would be good. If I can argue with the national curriculum, the UK foundation to the education of our children could legally be challenged by a particular law Then I think I could come out the other side with a pass mark that would prove it. Oh, that's why, because he's British, uh, prove that it is actually possible. I enrolled today and the course starts Monday coming. Would you like to help some of the FE points that go into with me? I would be able to give you a copy of it once it's done and well, a physical copy, but my name won't be on it anywhere. Just the institute name and my student number. So would you get something in the bookshelf for your help? Penny for your thoughts, Tony, uh, aka Sleeping Warrior. I, Tony, I'm sorry, there, there's only so much time in the day and I, I just don't have the time to do everything. I'm, I'm doing videos, I'm doing promos. I'm doing interviews, I'm making a ton of phone calls, and of course, I mean, this email, by the way, that you sent me, uh, if you're listening, is back from September 18th, and it gives you kind of an idea, so if you guys send me an email, chances are I'm not going to read it for a while, unless it's truly inspiring, uh, it's it's just going to take me, and I don't, eventually, I'm not going to be able to read all, and really, most of my emails, because I'm just going to be, I'm going to be too busy, but I've done 90, this is my 92nd show, so I'm going to keep trudging along as long as I can. As long as the producers allow me. Uh, let's see. I think I already did that email. Yep, because that's a duplicate. This one's called, Would it not be easy to go to the moon? Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I do believe we don't know the answers and words are just words. No proof of anything. I have a lot of questions, mostly logic questions. FE videos all have the moon landing hoaxes and that the world is under a dome with the sun and the moon inside the dome. I can accept this. Sounds logic. Sounds logic. Logical, you mean? Okay, if the moon is inside the dome and it's not too far away and there are no Van Allen belts or something and there is a video claiming an amateur rocket bounces off the dome. Yeah, I know. It seems fine, but I don't, I mean, could be 73 miles. I'm not going to, not completely discount it. Would it not be easy to go to the moon? What, easy, like how? Easy just sending a rocket to the moon? Easy bouncing a laser off the moon? Or easy trying to land on it? Because the, the, the last one, landing on it, that would be extremely tough, especially if it's not even potentially a three-dimensional object. Uh, and, you know, for example, if it's not, let's say it's like a planetarium, the moon on the ceiling of a planetarium looks pretty real. Can you land on it? No. If you tried, what would happen? It wouldn't go well. Uh, anyway, he says, my, ne my name is Leendert and I'm truly interested in the flat earth theory, but I cannot see the proof in any video. It's just words or a way of interpretation, not really proof. Best regards. Okay, it's fine. It's in your head. It was in your head long enough that you bothered to write me this email and try to work out the logic. If you want to hang on to the globe a little while longer, more power to you. It will not last forever. This one's called, thank you and please reply. Hey, Mark, hope this finds you well. Absolutely love your YouTube channel, my friend. Thank you for your time and effort. The FE Clues series is fantastic. Yourself, along with the likes of Dubay and Jaren, have truly opened my eyes to the real world, the flat earth. I'm not religious. I've always hated organized religion and seen it as a manipulative, manipulative and the cause of lots of suffering. But I now believe, having been awakened, that there is a very is very likely a creator, and the Big Bang is BS. 
One thing I cannot understand, and it would mean the world to me if you could reply with an answer, please, is if the world is flat and there is a firmament that showeth his handiwork, why is the Vatican in on the deception? Ooh, good question. Excellent question. Why is the Vatican in on it? What is their what is their stake in the game? Why do they continue to push the heliocentric model? Surely they would love to be able to point to his work, highlight our significance, actually prove God and strengthen its case. Would love an answer if you have the time. Thank you and peace. That's from Ben. And yeah, that's a good question. Why? You know, anyone that's left there listening, you want to write in on this. I'm not going to read it for some time, but I might read it if if it's if it's good enough. Tell me why you think the Vatican would want to keep this a secret. I've got my own take on it, but why? Why? What's your take? Who knows? Maybe maybe yours is better than mine. This one is called 911 Broadcast. Okay. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for all you do. Your videos are wonderful. I am paying attention. FE is all new to me. Might listen to your program this evening, but wanted to email a few notes instead of calling in. First, your opinion about Eskimos is debatable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I actually think the Himalayan Sherpas are head and shoulders above the rest, unless the earth is truly flat. Although, if it is a globe, then maybe you're correct that Eskimos are above the rest of us. <laughs> uh, I'm never going to hear the end of that. And that was from ooh, early 2017 when I said that little quote. I saw a cartoon, a couple polar bears outside an igloo. One was about to take a bite saying, my favorite truffle, crunchy outside and soft inside. Yeah, I think that was a uh, Gary Larson uh, cartoon. He, he, he had some wonderful stuff with bears. Anyway, I worked at a National Air and Space Museum gift shop in 2002 for six months, helping the book sales manager and so assisted at a book signing with seven astronauts present for the release of Space Shuttle the first 20 years. I gave the signed book to my brother, but just bought another one to really ponder it now. Wish I knew then what I'm learning now so as to question them. The Space Station 3D IMAX film premiered a, at NASM that spring. Tom Cruise with Penelope Cruz hosted it. I've also bought books on Antarctica. One has photography by Joan Myers. Her intro states from her travel journal. I'm just not leaving all I hold dear. I'm not just leaving the country. I realize I'm leaving the planet behind. Hmm. The other book by Gabrielle Walker fell open to a page telling of a moon rock find. I watched the ISS fly over maybe in 2009. My friend has a fan that has checked their schedule and direction, and it was precise about 9.30. It was bright, crossed from west to east. Hmm. I wonder if it flew at a passenger plane altitude, not much higher. About Genesis 1, I'm a songwriter, and he gave me a song about that, plus about one about what happened previously a war in heaven well many christians think the earth is ancient but i just remembered god said he would create a new heaven and earth so that settles it for me and if the second one sounds instant then why wouldn't the first one have been instant also really why did he take the whole six days uh why why not i mean what I mean by that is, uh, and it's the old argument, which is, fine, God created the, the heavens and the earth in, in six days, rested on the seventh. But what is a day to God? And it doesn't, you know, yeah, of course, there's instantaneous, but time passes. You know, God, I think, manipulates things in, in layers. You know, it's a work in progress. You know, what what fun would it be for God to just, you know, snap his fingers and everything gets gets built right then and there? It's the journey, even for God. I'm not going to say him or her because, you know, God, you know, I don't want to get into that argument. Uh, but but it's the journey. It is about uh, the 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 building process. You know, everyone takes pride. And look, look, when you build a house. Uh, the, 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 all the things that go into a house, there's this wonderful feeling of satisfaction when you're done building it or whatever you're building. You know, that's, that's part of the point, whether you're building a little model or a giant skyscraper or everything in between, it's the process. And I think even God has to go through that process to, to get something out of it. Uh, let's see, you recommended a song, but I just heard Amber Plaster's Flat Earth and immediately wanted to hear more of her songs since he, learning about 9-11 one year ago, getting a spiraling re-education since the flat earth movement is the first real joy now pulling me back into the light more notes for another day god bless you mark 
Anne in Minnesota. You're very welcome, Anne. Next one is called Got em Question. <laughs> Mark, I've plagued you with requests for picks and shout outs and all sorts of stuff, but this is good. This may have been covered already. I don't do a lot of net, <laughs> so it may already be out there, but here it goes. The JAXA film, you spelled JAXA wrong, it's J-A-X-A, which is the Japanese uh, space agency, or whoever it was that filmed the moon passing by the Earth from their satellite. I don't think it was Japanese. Well, I don't think it was anybody, it was, but, it, but it was released by the Americans. How much more fake can you get? The first thing that occurred to me was if the Earth was this tiny chip when photographed from the moon landing how could the earth fill the view behind the moon when the cameras were captured yes the the lodestone moment uh, i really hope you and jaronism uh, have missed this or not mentioned it i'd really like to be a flat earth pioneer however again best regards steve chandler I, no no steve we are you kidding when the when NASA released those photos, the 20 frames of the Earth transiting in front of the, I'm sorry, the moon transiting in front of the Earth, and you can look that up. And there's 20 frames, and the and the the resolution is terrible. And again, there's only 20 frames, and it was released in 2015. What what? Where's the HD footage? And the the moon was traveling too fast. The the dark side was should have been v much much brighter because we were looking at the dark side from the sun. Uh, sun's point of view, they were, the sun should have been right behind that satellite at a million miles. And yes, uh, the, the Earth should have been much bigger for the astronauts. And yet they couldn't do it, make it much bigger because it would have made production techniques really, really tough. Because if you make it any bigger, here's the reason why. It's like, why why didn't they make the, the if you're going to fake it, why didn't you make the Earth bigger when you're viewing from Apollo? And that's because if you do, you're going to start to make out continents. And if you can start to make out continents, you got that date, date timestamp problem goes along with the whole stars issue. It's like, why weren't there any stars visible on the moon? That's because the constellations have to be in a certain point. And that is if a picture is taken and those were all time date stamped, it's like, okay, this picture was taken on April 4th at 8, 8 p.m., right? Pacific Standard Time or Greenwich Mean Time or whatever it is. Then some nerd is going to look and they're going to find the constellations. They're going to say, yeah, the belt of Orion's in the wrong place. How can it be in the wrong place? And if it's the wrong place one time, it's going to be all wrong all over and then the whole thing just falls apart. So they said, just get rid of the stars. Just get rid of the stars. And while you're at it, make the moon as, or the earth as cloudy as possible. Make sure no one can tell what continents are showing on the earth at any given time. It's a smart move. I would have done the same thing. This one's called Flat Earth and Artificial Sun. And you know what? I'm going to close this other window because I think I'm getting bandwidth features. I was streaming yesterday in the background. I was streaming uh, Man in the High Castle. and Because uh, I hadn't really watched any of I watched most of season one, but I hadn't watched season two and season three. So I was streaming it and I noticed that it was killing my bandwidth. And I think that's what's happening here. But that's okay. I caught it. And I think we're going to be fine. This one's called Flat Earth and Artificial Sun. Hi, my name is John Clinton O'Neill. I am 28 years old. I'm from Glasgow, Central Scotland. I'm sure you remember my last mail. <laughs> really? I'm sure you remember my last email. I get that every once in a while. I called you three years ago. We talked for like 10 minutes and it, it, we, we talked about Flat Earth. I was like, man, I get a lot of phone calls. I, I, I appreciate every single one of them. I cherish them. I cannot remember all of them though for obvious reasons because my brain would just melt. Um, last email where I am the, from the weather has not been the same this year. And we had snow for weeks on end as high as my knees. We do not usually get it that long and that deep. Everything was at a standstill. Supermarkets, uh, were short on supplies for days. Then the summer came and we had intense heat and UV levels for the entire summer, uh, which we never had before. It usually only lasts a week or two each year. And now... Yesterday, it was 15 degrees Celsius on my thermometer with rain and wind. Now today, on the 9th of September, 2018, we have storm Ollie approaching. And it's so weird as the sun in the sky was so yellow before the rain started at 7 a.m. And on some occasions, the sun looked white rather than yellow. It was strange. I think the sun is artificial and temperature controlled along with the weather. I attached an image I took from my window. Also, I stay near an observatory at the west of Scotland Science Park and all sorts of weird stuff goes on there. Tell me your thoughts and hi to your listeners and fellow flat earthers. That's from John. And yeah, he sent me an interesting picture of the sun. It's kind of cool looking. It looks like an atomic blast in the distance. 
uh, on the horizon. That's awesome. And yeah, I mean, there's a reason why uh, the, the scientists changed really it from global warming to climate change. I, it, people say, oh, you're, you're trying to you're not trying to freak people out. But really, it's more accurate. Because the climate is changing. Everybody knows is that the weather is, is ridiculous. And I mean, I got, I was getting a tan here in Seattle last week. It's November. And I was literally getting some sun outside. And it wasn't even close. I mean, it was warm out there. And how? How is that possible? I'm up on an island in northwestern Washington. If I would have done that 20 years ago, I, I would have died from exposure. I would have died, you know, hypothermia would have started kicking in. So how is it happening? It's because it's climate change. Everybody knows it. And and it's because we're in an enclosed system. And people say, well, you know, does a flat earth, what does that do? With it? In fact, it's amazing how many people bring up to me how flat earth and climate change. And I go, it's a lot more effective in an enclosed system. You think, I, I'm kidding. Go to an enclosed sports stadium, you know, with a domed roof and have everybody light up cigarettes. <laughs> or or have, or watch, hey, forget about the cigarettes. Have have the, watch the pyrotechnic show at the beginning. Watch how long the, the smoke hangs out at the top of that thing. Uh, you can do a lot, you can make a lot of changes on the inside of a structure if you wanted to. This one's called NASA pick. Mark, zoom in on the background of the helmet looks flat to me. Can you send me the 12 slides? See you in Denver. I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. And that's from Daniel Brown. And let's see if I look at his picture real quick. Hopefully it's not too big. And there's no preview. Oh, come on. No, I'm not going to watch it right now. This one's called From Lebanon. Okay. Uh, I'm Sue. Good. Mo oh, good morning, Mark. I'm Sue. And she's abbreviating everything. I'm Sue from Lebanon. I believe in Flat Earth, but very... Oh, boy. But every bitty tell me I'm stupid and knit educated, but I trust no one. She's using a combination of text speak, abbreviation, and phonetics. I'm... I'm I should, I'm not going to give her too much grief, but I trust no one, even NASA, no matter who I only trust and believe in Jesus. So I have so many questions, especially now, she actually wrote out specially, especially now China want to go to the moon and I know no one can do that. The moon, not a planet and it's in the water in the dome. And if they said they went to the moon again, question mark you why no one oof, sorry i don't read a lot of text speak so why and then no right after it with number one is no one interested to discover after antarctica because many and many maps found before thousands of years that the earth is flat and they put all the continents even before find some of them so i believe it's flat and why and we have a dome she actually abbreviated have to HV. Is that a thing? Uh, and some continent to find after Antarctica. So why they put the effort for something good for the earth? Why all the country lie? <laughs> then she puts 10x. <laughs> 10x? And, and that was sent by Sue. Thank you, Sue, from Lebanon. Uh, I, I don't even know how to begin to answer this. I will probably just write you privately because it's going to take me a while to decipher that that email. I was actually getting a headache reading it. Uh, not because it was written terribly, uh, just because English is not our first language. Uh, this one's called First Man Trailer. Don't read my email, please, or e email address, please. Hey, Mark, been a listener for years, but I had recently been doing other things during that time. I saw the trailer for this new movie and knew you must have covered it at some point. Can you direct me to the video? Was interested in hearing predictions about how the trailer will shed light on the topic and then, of course, reactions to the movie when it's out. Lastly, I was in a coffee shop uh, here in Virginia and there were two tip jars, flat and globe, with about the same amount. Just thought it was cool that they were there. Really? Not that they were equal. Thanks, AK. That is interesting. A coffee shop in Virginia and there were two tip jars, one that said flat and one that said globe. Interesting. That is really, really interesting. I, I love that concept, by the way. And as far as somebody call, uh, uh, covering First Man, the movie about Neil Armstrong starring Ryan Gosling, well, one, it didn't do that well in the theater, and 
two, I don't think many Flat Earthers were, were going to go see it. I certainly haven't seen it. I may watch it just because it's going to be free and I'll tear out some of the video and, and try to put it up. And yeah, I know it'll be um, uh, trademarked, but that's fine. Uh, the The problem with First Man, there well, several problems with First Man. The, the first is they waited too long. And that, again, my first clue that I made called The Empty Theater never made a movie about a moon mission. And they finally, finally did one in 2018, which is perfect because that was three years after I made my clue, which more reinforces the clue. And but but because they waited so long to make a moon movie, we had generations go by to where there's kids growing up now that have no idea what you're talking about. So, yeah, we heard about the moon missions, but we don't really care. We, we why there's no interest in it it's only older people are going to watch that movie now uh, because it's there's just no current space program that anyone cares about it's they've just they've just taken it down so many notches that the interest level uh, more more people kids any anyone under the age of 20 they're more concerned about playing minecraft than they are watching anything on the, that's happening supposedly on the iss Interesting. I, there might be some people that, that that'll eventually make stuff, but right now I, I don't even think it's out on DVD yet. So it's got to get out on DVD first. Maybe it'll happen for the holidays. Maybe it won't. And then people will rip parts of it and then put it on uh, put it on YouTube. But it's going to be redundant by that point. Remember, we've been tearing down the the space agencies for three years. So having them make this movie phew, doesn't help them. It helps us more than it helps them. This one's called 12 Slides, Please. Yep. Hi, Mark. If you could, please send me the 12 slides talked about. Thanks, Mark. Hope is all well. That's Clint. This one's called Flat Earth NASA. And hi, Mark. Love your stuff. Keep up the great content. I'm sharing it. Not sure if you saw this new site from NASA. Kind of funny. They have digitized a city and a home on a flat earth. And yeah, yeah, it's interesting. NASA made this thing called Trace Space Back to You. Have you ever wondered how space exploration and research impact your daily life? And they drew, they drew two flat worlds floating in space. Literally the whole, you know, asteroid, the flat asteroid in space thing. Interesting. Huh. So look that up if you get a chance. This one's called Please Send Me Things. <laughs> Direct. Hey, Mark, been listening to you for a long time. Love what you do. Will you please send me some of the items you have? A survival guide, the Coast to Coast show that you can't publish, and the 12 photos to convert anyone to Flat Earth. Thank you very much, Bob in West Michigan. Yep, and I did. That's all you have to say, and I'll send you the stuff. This one's called New Date for Bristol UK Meetup. Hi, Mark, hope you're well. Would you mind kindly mirroring the video with the title? October 13th, that shows you how far back we are. Flat Earth Bristol Meetup. Thank you, Robin. Yep, and I did that. If anyone wants to do their meetup, all you have to do is send me the date and the place, date, time, the place, and the contact information. And I will whip up something for your city or state or Canadian province or wherever you want, and so you guys can have a fun meetup. I've done, I think there's 200 of them. <laughs> I've done 200 promos on my, on my playlist, and I know there's a lot more out there that I could have done. This one's called Heap of Space Junk. Hey, Mark, have you seen the latest new... New? <laughs> that was... I'm reading it as is, guys. I try to correct when I can. Latest new... I think it's news that was released today about a net they fire from a satellite to capture space junk uh, here on the BBC. Yep. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at this. So when they fire the so-called net, where does it go after that? If it's attached to the satellite, I will pull the satellite out of its orbit. Uh, how can the scientists that have spent all the time dreaming up and building this invention not see what NASA shows them is a complete fake? I despair. <laughs> That's good. I've never, I've never gotten that. I despair I'm fr with a frowny face next to it. Best regards, Steve. I don't mention my name on your radio show. Ah, ha, ha. You see what you did there? You put that literally below your name. And so I read your name anyway, but I'm not going to give your last name. It starts with a C. Okay, this one's called Five Questions. Hello, Mark. I'm a big fan. And to me, you are the best ambassador for Flat Earth. Oh, that's nice. I don't know if that's true. I think there's other people that do fantastic work. I'm merely the freshman recruiter. Don't put all the blame on me when things start burning down. I'm a bedbound paraplegic of over 30 years, and I've lived for the last 17 years in a nursing home. I've already woken a number of uh, careers and family to Flat Earth, which is so exciting. 
Your five questions were superb and would love a copy, please. God bless Paul Simpson. You are welcome, Paul. And I already sent them to you. Hope they hope they help. This one's called a critique of flat earth. Mark, have you heard these criticisms criticisms below? I know it's long, but what do you think? Yeah, it was a video from oh, what was his name? Creation Ministries. And and again, I don't mind. Look, there's going to be pastors are should brace against this uh, immediately because they are uh they're in a tough spot. You have members of the congregation coming up to them and saying that, you know, they, we, they like to know about flat earth. There's a lot of biblical stuff the, the Bible, the Christian Bible is a flat earth book. It is a uh, 40, 22. Oh, now I finally remembered it. So I'm sorry, Isaiah 40, 22. I'm sorry. The beginning of the show again, I was just off the treadmill. So the, uh, they're, they're holding on to it because what do you do? Do you go to your congregation and do you say, by the way, the earth is flat and here we're going to, we're going to start altering the, our, the, the messages because of that. Or do you hold fast and kind of stick? You're, you're in a tough spot. Stick with science, science, which you will, will, will go after on a regular basis and say that science is wrong about evolution and, and the big bang theory and dark matter and all this other stuff. But you're going to say, no, no, science is right about the globe. Uh, it's a reach. It, it's tough. And so, yeah, there's, there are a, a number of pastors out there. Now, there's some that are on our side as well, but it's it's tough. Peer pressure does get to people. I, ch I challenge anyone, you know, what would you do if you had a congregation of, I don't know, even a couple hundred people and you got up there? You How what, how are you going to deliver that message about flat earth? It's going to be tough. In fact, I wouldn't do it. I Honestly, I wouldn't do it without bringing a, a hardcore flat earth Christian in there like Rob Skiba or Robbie Davidson or Zen Garcia or... Uh, Controversy 7 or, or any of those guys. You invite them out. Tag team them if you can. This one's called Elon Musk listens to Mark Sargent. Oh, I doubt that. Uh, Mark, the SpaceX moon mission will be live streamed in high def and VR. And they are streaming the whole thing. Also, have you seen the windows of the ship? Entire front of the craft is glass. And that, yeah, that was tweeted by Elon Musk. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, those moon missions. Yeah, tell me about those moon. In fact, the the, the moon mission isn't even even slated for years, and he supposedly has a, a Japanese tourist. And now the Japanese guy said he's bringing like eight or nine people with him, which means you're not using a standard capsule. You'd have to reinvent the space shuttle program. No, they're kicking that can down the road. Elon Musk isn't doing anything. Why he is allowed on camera? I have no idea. No freaking idea. He should never do interviews. He just, oh, he makes oh, the worst statements ever. This one's called Video Clip. Hi, Mark. I'm interested in using a clip of your Flat Earth uh, 7 minutes 53 in a video that I'm making about Flat Earth. Is this okay? Thank you, David Allard. Yeah, anyone knows that I've never thrown a strike at anybody for any reason. Uh, no, I've, I've, co I've contacted people about mistaken identity and trying to copyright copyright some of my work. But you can use it for whatever you want. So have fun with it. And, and and many people have. In fact, that's how most of the people that have contacted me have heard about Flat Earth Clues. They just mirrored the clues on their channel. Uh, I think I'm kidding. I, I look up and I, I still haven't found all the mirrors. I'm not going to either. I don't care. Uh, but it, like um, look up, they are hiding God, God with the greatest lie ever. Or they are hiding God with the biggest lie ever. Or under the dome full documentary. Or all the others. There are so many that uh, that have millions of hits. And I, you know, that's great. Have have fun. It's the message that I care about. Uh, the, the YouTube nickels, not so much. This one's called Flat Earth Resources. Hi, Mark. I'm a regular listener to your show, and I'd like to request a few things you've talked about. Please send me the five questions and 12 slides, the survival guide, and the coast-to-coast -coast interview. Email or text. Thanks, and I will keep it flat. That's from Dave Miller. Very welcome. This one's called Graphics Help. Hi, Mark. I know how short notice this is, but with the LA Film Fest this Saturday, all the best for that, and all the stuff you need to get sorted for November, I really want to order some stickers to cover around my city in the UK. I'm known as Dan the Toilet Flat Earther. Long story. I know how brilliant you are at creating great graphics. No, no, I steal great graphics. I am not a good graphic guy. I don't even own Photoshop. 
I just grab, I can grab graphics and I can alter a few things here and there, but I am not a graphics. There's plenty of graphic guys out there. I'm not one of them. I can do some editing, uh, some video editing, and I can piece things together. But most of the stuff I use is a compilation from other people. Just grab it and, and kind of slice and dice and, and put it, rearrange things in order. Um, in a different order. If you have the time, could you look and try a few things as I think Flat Earth and a toilet may give the wrong impression? Thanks, Dan. Uh, hopefully, did I respond to him? Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry, Dan. I, I, I do miss emails from time to time. This one's called Flat Smack Materials. Hi, Mark. Do you have any more Flat Smack Materials to show to a hardened glober? Thanks, Kirk. Yes. And I wrote him back. This one's called The Moon Question. Moon question. Mark, in search of this flat earth information, can you explain anything on the moon? Moon phases, eclipses, and does it have its own energy? Uh, it does have its own energy. It seems to be its own light source. Uh, look up the, the cold moonlight, the, the cold laser light that it's generating, how it's warmer in the moon shade than actually in the moonlight, which is opposite from the sun. It should not be possible. And as far as the moon phases and eclipses, why? I mean, it's it's part of a display system. Whatever's up there, it can... In a planetarium, can... If you go to a planetarium, can you see the moon phases? Yes, you can. Can you get to that moon? No, you can't. So what's the difference? Nothing. If you have any YouTube videos, please let me know. The moon has been very interesting to me. Thanks for the help and have a great day. Thanks for all your work, Jeremy. Welcome, Jeremy. This one's called Flatware. Mark, good afternoon. What is the hardware and software flatware that you use for Flat Earth and other hot potato show that you do with Patricia's? I've noticed that the camera focuses on the person that is speaking. Regards, Daniel Hobbs. Ah, good question. Um, so the hardware really doesn't, um, it has nothing to do with what you're seeing there. All we're using is Google Hangouts. And Google Hangouts, and we can do just about anything you want with software, but this is super, super easy. So in Google Hangouts, there's the default setting is uh, show the person that is talking. So it's an audio cue. So once the microphone picks up that somebody is talking, the, the camera will automatically switch to them. It's like a little mini sound studio thing. So you don't have to have, you know, a production van going, okay, this person, this person. So it's all based on sound, uh, which is why when you mute your microphone, it's always good to mute your microphone if you're not talking in the hangout. Because if you make like a random noise, if you put down a cup, and it's loud enough, your microphone will click. And you'll notice this because people will like shift around in their seats and all of a sudden you'll see the camera go to them but they're not doing anything. That is because the it's the microphone that's making the camera change. So there you go. Little tip for you. Learn something new every day. This one's called Survival Guide Request. And Mark, can I please have a copy of your Survival Guide? Thanks for all you and Patricia do. And she didn't write the survival guide. I did. Why are you giving credit to Patricia? Oh, I hate her so much. She always gets in my emails. This one's called survival guide. Hey, Mark, can you please send me your survival guide? Thank you. And see, Patricia was not mentioned here. So he's, I'm fine with that one. That's one's from Jose. And yes, I sent it. And the survival guide that I'm talking about is a little free survival guide I, call, I wrote called Empty Shelves. I wrote after Hurricane Katrina. I was not down there. Yes, I know. Patricia was down there and nothing happened to her. Because nothing ever happens to her. She's not bulletproof, but damn close to it. And uh, when the, all the people came back from Katrina, half of the city left, and, or all the city left, and only half of them came back. But the ones that did come back, most of them still didn't prepare. It's like, get a case of water. You were just chased out of your own city. Uh, get some water, some batteries, a little food. Don't need much more than that. Want a weapon to protect yourself? Hey, fine. I'm not judging. So that's why I wrote it. But if you want, that's fine. This one's called, please send the 12 picks and the five questions. Mark, please send 12 picks and five questions. Thanks. And that's from Jeff. And this one's called, no subject. I always like those. Hello, my name is Carol Ann and I am 17 years old. This is written in my like 26 point font. For years, I have questioned the world and how a spinning ball with water is in the middle of nothing. I came across the flat earth and a completely under... I completely understand. I truly believe the earth is flat. It just simply makes sense. I am definitely more right brain and I support creation, art, vivid things. I feel nowadays people are more logical and systematic, left brain, and people believe things because of how it always been taught. 
I oppose logic and science and don't really understand it or why it is a thing. However, I can see why other people would believe that. I love watching your videos about the flat earth because I agree with everything you say. People need to know they think we are crazy or idiots. I don't think that at all. I believe that God created the dome and I hope one day people would understand that. That's from Queen Carly. Well, that's her, that's her handle. Uh, but her name is Carly Ann. Oh, Carly Ann. Carly Ann. That's an unusual name. And she's 17 years old. Thank you for that. This one's called... Flat Earth versus Globe. Where is the proof? And there may be too many questions here. But yeah, let's read it. Heck with it. Uh, dear Mark, my name is Aaron and I'm from Queensland, Queensland, Australia. I'm going to rattle off the questions because this is what happens. People just get a ton of questions. I'm not going to answer them though in order. I'll let you guys, anyone's listening to the show, you know the answer is these already. I recently came across the Flat Earth Theory and when I heard about this movement, the first thing I did was laugh, roll my eyes and think, really? This conspiracy is a real thing as I'm sure just about everyone who comes across it does. So I decided to do some digging into just what it was and had people believing in such an outlandish concept. I was directed to your Flat Earth Clues series and then on to your Strange World radio cast. And as I listened to them, I became more and more fascinated and captivated on the notion that the world may indeed be as flat as they say it is. I watched each episode, taking notes as I went, looking for more facts, uh, that I could use to uncover the truth to help me make an informed decision as to whether or not I could actually buy into it and the idea that this is one of the biggest cover-ups known to date. As you may think, I started to delve into a world full of so much information that I start, started to boggle my mind and I was blown away by the facts presented to me. At this point, I decided to start focusing on whether or not I could disprove the FET, <laughs> the abbreviated flatter theory, and to my amazement, I have not been able to do it at this point. No, you can't. In fact, I can't prove either way which theory is correct and which is fake. So yes, I now have more questions than answers, and I was hoping that you could help steer me in the direction of more information and help me answer some quandaries I now have on both sides. I decide to just dot points of the more disturbing ones <laughs> disturbing i simply cannot answer from both groups okay we're just gonna rally these off real quick if the world was in a dome how do we see phases of the moon and the lunar eclipses as from what i understand of fet uh the moon and the sun cycle above the earth at opposite sides of the dome at all times they never intersect paths uh if the moon is in space how is there a blue sky behind it how do we explain global warming global warming how does nasa explain the earth's various images when the land mass keeps changing size how is the world's gravitational pull explained how do i find out more on what's going on at the antarctic why don't we have any close-up shots of the sun how do birds debunk a globe earth how do constellations work in a flat earth model i'll leave my questions there as i'm sure you have many emails like mine and want to know as many things as i do and time probably does not permit you to answer them all uh, isn't that the truth I hope to hear back from you as I indeed uh, you can help me solve some of these mysteries and can help steer me in the direction of more knowledge. Thanks and keep up the fantastic work you do in creating yet another marvelous conspiracy for us to wrap our heads around. All the best, Aaron. And yeah, Aaron, I, I can't answer all those questions right now because there's just not enough time. I mean, I've got a pile, a pile of emails, but just keep digging. There's tons of people out there that are making flat earth content and you will find the list that you um, that you so desperately need. Uh, the one, you know what, if you're into scripture at all, or even if you're not into scripture, I recommend the Rob Skiba's great website, which is called testingtheglobe.com. It's a, it's a fantastic piece of work and it covers a lot of different topics. That's where I would start. This one's called Emergency Supply List Request. Hi, Mark. Thanks for opening my eyes and mine three years ago. And yes, you get credit for that father of flat earth. Ha ha. Can I get a copy of your emergency supply documents and possibly the slideshow? <laughs> I actually spelled it shoe. 12 photos that you talked about in your show a little while back. Thanks, Mark, for all you to do. Corey. Yep. Happy to do it. This one's called How Long Ago? Mark, how long ago from today, not a date, did the Franks of Middle Franconia use the Vasa to find the dome? If you can't answer this honestly, don't respond. Cordially, Winton. I have, ne I have never heard that. No uh, so, no, I can't answer it. Sorry. 
Never heard that before in my life. This one's called Few Questions. It's from a guy named Mark. Hi, Mark. Mark Butte here. I am quickly becoming a flat earther. Just a few questions that trouble my mechanical mind. I'm sure that you have probably already answered these. Help me find the answers. First, how do we explain the tides? Uh, electromagnetic force. If you want to call it electrostatic, molecular magnet, whatever. It's, it's from down here, though. It's not by the moon. Second, given time zones, how does you speed of travel how does your speed of travel come on proofread guys uh change in northern latitudes versus southern latitudes like traveling across canada versus Br brazil no idea please help thanks mark this one's called regarding retired navy chief qmc Hey, Mark, great to see your speech at the Canadian conference. Loved it. Here is the pseudoscientist uh, YouTube, Simon Dan. Yeah, I know that guy. Uh, refuting five major points of your speech. Thought you might be interested. His most telling point to me is at nine minutes when he denies the rakia. Rakia? R-A-Q-I-Y-A. Because if that were true, then someone would have created it, and that would be a bit dodgy. <laughs> Regards your friend. Oh, yeah, John from the uh, retired navy flat earth navigator yeah he's good this one's called sorry machine running a little slow come on come on oh xfinity come on speed it up a bit i've got a blazing connection and this thing is just dying right now okay uh hello mark my name is jim it's called flat earth Sorry. Uh, my name is Jim and I'm living in Toronto. I've been watching you and Patricia since you started. I've not taken the total plunge, so to speak, and I'm an atheist. Also do not believe in science. Okay, how can you be an atheist and not believe in science? But respect for you as you seem genuine. I need to ask the question. You are a truther. I have heard. How can you believe in a made-up deity that many cultures before the present one display a similar God story? Christian doctrine is a mishmash of other pagan beliefs, and I hear this a lot in a flat earth that most flat earth people are Christian. Nah, but about half are. Uh, and is the reason I cannot get involved? I cannot believe one God made us under a dome with no way out. Wow, I may have to uh, actually end on this, this one because this is interesting. Uh, penal colony. Oh, uh, and only groveling gets you out. And then there is no proof of that. So with my limited knowledge, I cannot believe in God or science. And the computer simulation does not compute either. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, so, no pun intended. Oh, of course, you, there was a pun intended there. I would, why would you say no pun intended? Uh, because all the facts I've seen so far point to a flat plane with stuff circling over us. And it's what my senses also tell me. Does this mean I'm in a closet? I'm a closet flathead. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Uh, I want to ask for a survival book you were sending out. I am moving to the interior of British Columbia eventually, and I'm a prepper, so to speak, and always need more info, especially if it's free. So thank you for the offer. I need to ask you some questions in regards to the Masonic symbolism. If you have the time or you can point me in the direction of someone, I might be able to pick their brain. I understand they meld this God and science to where it makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, the, the, the Masons, uh, they don't believe in any one religion. They, but they do, I don't want to get into it right now. You know, it's a long story. We just don't have time. We're going to be wrapping this up in a couple of minutes. Uh, I do not really go to YouTube or the interweb for real info as most is, is terrible. I would go to Freemasons Hall here in Ontario, but low level grunt, grunts will not have the answers to the questions I have. Wow, this man is all over the place. So thanks again for your vids and knowledge you pass on. Anyway, I bothered you enough. So many blessings uh, and keep your stick on the ice. Oh, I see. That's a Canadian thing. Keep your stick on the ice. And that's from Jim in Toronto. Uh, whew, okay, how should I answer this? In the, the limited time, I, I got to answer this in like a couple minutes. So first thing is, if if you're an atheist, you're going to have problems with the flat earth model because eventually you're going to have to either believe in a dome or not a dome. And if you believe in a dome, well, then it's a structure. Then you're in a building. And if it's in a building, if you're in a building, it was built, which meant, meant it was created by someone. 
And again, not, I'm not saying that it, it's the Christian God. I, well, of course, I'm leaning that way because I was raised Christian. Uh, but you can't just say it's nobody. You can't say that God isn't involved here. And you say, it's got to be a higher power bigger than you. And if you say, well, maybe it's just a, an advanced civilization. It's like, okay, one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. So then again, you're just splitting hairs. And the other spot part that's confusing me is he's like, he doesn't believe in science. No, 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 no. It's not that you can't, don't believe in science. I mean, we, we use science every day. It's not a question of if you believe in it. Uh, and that goes into Neil deGrasse Tyson's thing. But that's where he, so Neil deGrasse Tyson said that science is true, whether or not you believe in it. And I, I get that again, when you're talking about the boiling, boiling temperature of water at sea level. But if you're talking about the core of the earth, then that's a guess. You're, you're taking an educated guess when that's scientism, especially when you, that educated guess becomes fact later on, just because you've said it so many times, it becomes fact. So the, anyway, but he's, he's kind of all over the place. And I know, hey, look, if you're looking to the Masons for religion at this point, you might want to start with an actual religion first. Then uh, I'm not encouraging people to go to the Masons. I know in the conspiracy world, they're a dark, horrible thing. Uh, but don't, but I'm, I'm trying to help this guy here. It's like, look, don't go to the Masons right away. It's You've got to believe. Remember, the Masons, in fact, I don't even think the Masons would even uh, really want you to, to join because their whole point is you got to believe in something. They, they absolutely believe in a higher power. Now, the name of said higher power, that's a whole another story for another time. But you you got to believe in something if you're going to join them. So <clears throat> I'm sorry you're kind of spinning everywhere. And I'm sorry that Flat Earth is kind of uh, kind of spun you around. Uh, and I've heard this before. I'm not saying that Flat Earth will kill atheism, but it is going to reduce the numbers of atheists by a large margin. Uh, it just will. It's because, again, if it was built, if this place was built... Who built it and and it really leans toward that direction that it was built everything points there so that's about it that's what i'm gonna end on i know it's a little heavy to end on but eh, you guys are a little different this time around so thank you for everybody that emailed me before and everyone's gonna email me in the future uh the next weeks i will not be doing a q a next week because i'm traveling I'm, I'm going to the Denver International Conference and I'm flying back on Sunday. So I won't be, I, I don't think when I get home, I mean, if I have time, if I'm, I may, but I doubt it. I, I may be just too wiped out, but if not, I will try to do one of these next week, but I will pick it up the week after that. And remember, you can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.